time I can feel that burning deep inside Gonna give it all I have Gotta feel that power in my hands The beat of the drums rushing through my skin The way that they've recruited, they're looking to attack, they're, they're looking offensively to set themselves up. The Sheffield Sharks like to play slow, they like to grind it out. So we'll see who prevails tonight. Dumps it off. It's coming in by Delpesh. Evans for three. Nice shot. Regino runs it back and finishes at one. Nice pass. We're live from the Shark Tank in the Steel City, where tonight the B. Braun Sheffield Sharks host the Bristol Flyers. Plenty of good storylines, too, with the Del Pesh twins squaring off against each other for the first time in their career. And with history in touching distance, the Shark skipper, Mike Tuck. Very good evening to you. Yep, we're calling this one the Del Pesh Derby, and it could be a big night for our friend Shark skipper Mike Tuck gunning for the all-time franchise scoring record. So it could be a big night for him. It's definitely been a big week for our very own Kieran Achara, who I'm delighted to say joins us alongside Drew Lasker as ever, because Kieran presented with your MBE in person this week. Now, you've achieved so much through your career, but this must rank right up there. Honestly, it was, it's was it been so overwhelming. I, I was saying earlier on, it's the only time I've been happy with a silver medal in January. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know what? But as luck has have it, I've actually brought it with me tonight. I'm glad you remembered it. Yeah. And you polished it as well. He's Look such an inspiration, Drew Lasker, is he, to so many people. An unbelievable <laughs> accomplishment. Couldn't happen to a better person. Congratulations, big fella. Appreciate you, my man. Yeah, seconded. Now, that's not the only big news in British basketball this week. Announcement earlier on in the week that the London Lions and Vince McCauley, their coach, have gone their separate ways. Drew, how shocked were you when you heard this? Absolutely shocked. I mean, you're talking about the pioneer of British basketball and looking on the socials this week, you can see what he's meant to the community as he's lunch pad a lot of guys' careers. Yeah, it's interesting timing though, isn't it, Kieran? Mid-season. What do you make of that rationale? Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely not BBL. You know, we're not used to coaches going mid-season, but I, I was really shocked. I just think that from a from new ownership perspective, they, they've raised the bar. They, they believe they should be doing better in Europe and best, better domestically, and the results are just haven't been happening. He has been such an integral part of British basketball for, for so many years, so surely we'll be seeing him back in a, in a prominent role anytime soon. He's a lifer. He's a basketball lifer. I know that he'll be back you know, if it's working on grassroots, just making sure that British basketball continues to thrive. And the good news is it means we get to hang out with him more because he's also a brilliant broadcaster amongst anything else, so I'm sure we'll be seeing him uh, throughout the course of the season. The Lions in action this weekend. They host the Eagles on Sunday. Before that, Newcastle hosting Manchester. That's tonight's other game. Bristol, will they head back home after tonight to face the Glasgow Rocks on Saturday? The Sharks are also in action again this weekend. They're on the road at Surrey on Sunday. The Phoenix, will they host league-leading Leicester? And speaking of the Riders, unbeaten so far, and they are looking to make it a perfect 10 in Cheshire. Manchester lead the chasing pack with seven wins out of 11. It's tight, as you can see, in the race behind them. Both the Sharks and the Flyers very keen to keep up the pace and to keep that win percentage above 50%. We expect London to surge up the table because you can see they've got a lot of games in hand. Surrey, they've got one victory to their name, which was over the Lions, no less. Plymouth, who we saw last Friday on Sky Sports, followed up that win against Surrey with a superb victory over Manchester on Sunday. And let's have a look at the last five results for Sheffield because it's been a very much a mixed bag during that period, as indeed it has been all season, suffering home losses and a heavy home loss to Leicester and Cheshire, as well as a trophy first round defeat to Manchester. Both their wins have come against Plymouth. And when you consider, Drew, their strong start to the season, 
Why do you think their form has slumped? They can't score. I mean, over the last nine games, they've only scored over 80 once, and this team has to get back and find a way to put the ball back in the hoop. The Flyers have had a mixed uh, time of it as well over the last five games. They lost their last two league games to Leicester and Glasgow. That win in between was in the trophy, and it was a hell of a win as well against the Riders. They've also picked up league wins against Newcastle and Plymouth in their last month and change. Kieran, how significant was that trophy win over the Riders in terms of instilling this team with the belief that they can compete at the highest level? Yeah, it definitely was a morale booster. Uh, you know, they, they have been competing, especially defensively. They've been right up there with any team in this league. But, you know, beating a Leicester Riders, a really, really consistent team, it just shows that they can do that. It's just getting that consistency game by game. Both teams seem to be striving for consistency then. A huge night, as we said, for our friend Mike Tuck, the Shark Skipper, of course, part of our coverage. When he's not doing his day job, he is gunning for the all-time Shark scoring record and in true Hollywood Tuck style. He could have broken it last week, Drew Lasker, but he wanted to wait for the cameras to get it done. I mean, bright like Mike, what do you expect? He's mic'd up as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, that footage a little later on. What has he meant, Drew, to the Sharks organization over the years? I mean, Mr. Consistency, he's the ultimate pro. He's a great leader and been a staple with this program over 10 years, and he's built, helped build this program to where it is today. Written in the stars, he's going to get it done tonight, Gary. I, I, I think he's going to get it done tonight. I think I literally think he was saving himself for this game. Yeah, he's better. 100% he was. <laughs> the record held by Todd Cawthorn. Of course, another Sharks legend. Yeah, another household name. You know, uh, to be able to score that amount of points and not only that, play for that many seasons, you know, uh, uh, that's respect is due, definitely. And he came out of retirement and got it done as well. Is that something we might see from you? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. After my shooting performance earlier on. <laughs> yeah, no comment. Now, we mentioned the Delpeche twins uh, a bit earlier on. Uh, Marcus with Sheffield, Malcolm with Bristol. This is the first time they're going head-to-head -head in a pro game, but I suspect they might have had one or two tussles in their life. I'm pretty sure this is something they're used to growing up in the same household, same room. I'm pretty sure they have had many battles over the years. There's a great quote from Marcus. He said, you've got to keep your personal agenda in check and keep the bigger picture in mind tonight. <laughs> Easier said than done, Kieran. It's great, but you know they've got their coaches there doing exactly the same. If they're not keeping their personal agendas in check, I'm sure they'll be sitting right beside them on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm is a player that you feel has really developed to come into his own dream? I mean, he has improved his game tremendously. He was always looked upon as the second fiddle of the brother, but now you see he's the Flyers' leading scorer, second in offense, the rebound, having a great season. They did a big night from him tonight. Ah, now, as they're both in Sheffield, uh, Mike Tucker, Shark Skipper, decided to grab the initiative and take the brothers for a day in the Steel City that they'll never forget. Live, baby. Sky Sports, baby. You guys played in college together. You played in your first year as pros together in Bristol. But now we get to see you guys battle for the first time as professionals. Let's talk about Germany. What was the appeal of Germany and what brought you back to Bristol after spending so much time in Germany. Our team finished second in the regional Liga, and uh, so the team that actually came first, Munster, um, Munster Baskets, they got promoted. Um, I talked to the GM at the time, and um, you know my agent uh, was talking to him throughout the summer, and then they ended up just being like the ideal situation. And uh, I found we had a lot of success playing for that team. Just as far as coming back, like I know I knew Coach Kapulis, I know my brother. Uh, I've been playing there for the last three years. You know, I lived in Bristol for like, what, like three? It was like, we were there for, for like just about three months. So, I didn't know, I kind of already was had that level of familiarity. Basically, my job was easy. I just had to like just come in right behind Marcus because he kind of already traversed everything in a way. And Marcus, you spent four seasons at Bristol. What kept you there? I wanted to like have like a really good season and I think three months was like enough time. And then as I got better, like my role kind of increased after this past season. I think I kind of was like, I was like really happy where I was at. And then like Sheffield came to the picture and they kind of brought opportunity to me. Um, obviously this historically they've won, they've won like a lot. And so, and then obviously we have the man himself, Mike Tuck on there. I think he's a great leader. And so I think like with that and this kind of talking with everyone, I think like uh, after that third year with Bristol is kind of the next step with me was Sheffield. Amazing. Ah, yes, that's a two. Yeah, that's a two. Are you sure? It might be a one. No, that's a two. That's a two. Get it start, baby. It's a bad start. It's tough. That was tough. I'm sure how we do it in Bristol. Oh, 
Uh, Here we go. Um, How do you think the season's gone for you so far? The sky's the limit for us. Now we can literally just focus on on the championship. Ideally, we get into like the one-two spot in the playoffs, and so we can just like hit the ground running when we get there. And Malcolm. Obviously, Bristol has had some huge wins this season, including uh, uh, knocking Leicester Riders out of the trophy. How do you think the season's gone for you guys so far? Yeah, we actually won the, our first trophy game. So, But, no, we have a new team, and I think that we've one of the things that we've done really well is that regardless of whatever game that we're playing in or how tough of a team, whether it be Leicester or even London, we have grit and we fight. I never really feel like we're out of the game. Regardless of how the game goes, I know that we put our best foot. We, swung, we went down swinging. So let's talk about this movie you guys were just shooting. Adam Sandler movie? Yeah, Hustle. Yep. Any big names in the movie that so, we recognize? Anthony Edwards. Boban. Yeah. Boban. Well, Queen Latifah. Yeah. She was. Yeah, she is sick. She is sick. That's dope. And what was uh, Adam Sandler like? In all the movies that I've seen him, he just acts who he is in real life. Like, that's who he is in real life. And he's a hooper, too. Like, and he can yeah, hoop. Yeah, and he can hoop. Right? And he can hoop. Yeah. He can hoop. Like, it's, he's, he's certified. He's a certified. Was there any uh, pickup games, like, when yeah. the cameras weren't on? Yeah. He, threw, like he threw a lot to me in-game. Yeah. It, was, it was hype. If you guys could describe each other's games and, and each other's strengths and weaknesses, Oh man, oh, man. <laughs> toxic. <laughs> He's garbage now. <laughs> no, no. Um, if I describe my brother's game, I think he thrives best in like pick and roll situations. He reads the offense like really well, spacing off the ball and then like sitting in the dunker spots, as Coach Coolis would say. Hey, you were kind of nice. You didn't say anything about the weaknesses. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's my turn. It's my turn. I think because like you're just you're used to seeing Malcolm just doing the textbook, like post moves, and just getting to a spot and getting a bucket. You don't know that he act like he put the man into the coffin. <laughs> so like, but I think like he's athletic, but also I think he just he just picks his moments to do it. Now, obviously, you guys have played together at, at the collegiate level, and now you, you've played together as pros. But this is the first time we're seeing you guys, you know, face up against each other. Will this be a strange experience for you guys? Yeah, uh, playing against my brother. Um, old team and then old teammates. I think like the combination of three for me. Yeah, it's gonna be weird, but like uh, I'm, I'll be excited for it. Like our whole family back home. That's all they're talking about. And so when the ball goes up, you kind of it's really. I just gotta look at you. Just like you're just another competitor, just yeah. standing in my way. And I think that's like you know that's the only way you can look at it. I think the biggest thing I said, I gotta worry about just not getting into foul trouble. <laughs> Are you guys competitive? <laughs> it's like it gets toxic. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is it? Video games. That's chopped cheese. Like. It can be something as simple as working out, but it's like I think like when we work out in the gym, it's kind of like unsaid. So like we're at the bench press, like it's obviously you want to <laughs> you, you want to support each other, but like you just watch up with the side eye. If he's like kind of getting if, he, if he's getting close to your max, yeah, I'll throw on an extra five. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, don't worry about it. I just feel so small right now. Yo, you feel he's this big right now. <laughs> Bro, that is a bullseye. <laughs> Bro, this is my first time axe throwing. Okay. Yes. Ah! Wait, 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 wait. Ah! Ah! <laughs> See, your mom is from Sheffield, so the Sheffield area. Uh, who, who are your parents supporting in this game, guys? Is this, well, a, is this, is this a camera right there? That one? <laughs> Mom, <laughs> the homeland, right? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they have, if they were in New Jersey from both games. I mean, they're gonna, you know, they can't pick us. They can't pick a, a favorite. Well, win or lose, you guys are still brothers. We're really looking forward to this matchup, and thank you for being here today, guys. Yeah, of course. Yeah, look forward. You know, first game, yeah, sure first game in two weeks. It's harder than it looks. I assure you. I was thinking about this. Marcus and Mike play on the same team. They're all playing Friday. Malcolm's got to be thinking, you want to take me out axe throwing in the week off. But at least we've worked out what you guys are going to be doing in terms of post-game entertainment, right? Yeah, I think we need to have our own friendly competition of axe throwing right after this. I do not trust a Scotsman with an axe <laughs> For all kinds of reasons, incidentally, we're thoroughly, thoroughly relieved that they got out of that VT uh, unscathed. Next up, we're going to take a look at some of the major players going tonight for both sides as we get closer to tip-off.
Welcome back to Sheffield, our first time here this season. The Sharks hosting the Flyers, and it's a big night for both sides because they're very much in the chasing pack right now, but rosters full of talent. Mike Tuck, as we've been saying, going for the all-time Sharks scoring record. The Del Pesh twins squaring off as well in front of Friday Night Lights. What do you think is the ceiling this season for Sheffield, Drew? I think top four. You look at the landscape of the league, everything seems to be quite even, and they have the talent, they got the coach, they got the leader to be able to push forward. Let's have a look at the roster uh, that Sheffield have put together this season. Stronger year on year, I think it's fair to say. Aaron Addison controlling things from the backcourt. He's been a great addition this year. Alongside returnees Kip and Nichols, who adds real firepower, as does fellow American Jordan Retino, who's been in hot form from the perimeter and always seems to step up every time he's on Sky Sports. Rodney Glasgow leads the team in scoring. Marcus Del Pesh, who we've seen a fair bit of already, adds strength and versatility. Mike Tuck on the verge of Sharks greatness, as we say. Six foot ten, Bennett Cook in his third season with the Sharks. He's out tonight, though. And Devontae Wallace, the latest addition, brought into cover for the departed Jonathan Williams in the guard spot. So let's start with Wallace, Drew. A new face here but an experienced operator isn't he yeah he, he's a career 40 percent three-point shooter which sheffield desperately needs off to a slow start shooting half of that so he'll look to get going tonight in front of the cameras another one of these shots that's prolific from the perimeter and there are a few of them rodney glasgow is that one of the keys tonight for you drew the bristol's d has to shut down that three-point shooting from sheffield yeah, absolutely. And Glasgow, he's a paint toucher. He does a great job getting in the teeth of the defense, getting to his floater, his mid-range pull-up, and does a great job of distributing out the shooters in the corner. Aaron Anderson, five foot ten, and he's talked a lot, Kieran, about how so many people throughout his career have written him off because of his height. But nevertheless, despite the adversity and the criticism, he's built a prolific career and another highly experienced player. Yeah, he's a very steady player, and right now, I'm, that's how I class him, steady. I know he has so much more to give. You know, he's another career 40% three-point shooter, hasn't been hitting the shots the same way, but can get it done, and I know he's, got, he's got what he's capable of achieving. It's interesting, we see all this offensive talent, we're saying the offense has been the inconsistent thing, they haven't really managed to get that going recently. Kipper Nichols returning for his second year, and he was someone that really impressed us when we saw him last season. Do you feel he's kicked on so far this year, Kieran, with a season in the BBL under his belt? I feel again it's inconsistent. You know, defensively he's, he's great. He can guard small pole positions, but offensively, you know, his three-point shots improved so much. But I think he's still got so much more to give. Jordan Retino, as I mentioned a moment ago, absolutely loves the cameras, like his skipper. Right, every time we see him on Sky, he brings his A game through. Yeah, and what he does also, he's a great rebounder. At six foot five, he's a leading rebounder of the Sheffield Sharks. And I mentioned about Glasgow getting a teeth of the defense. He'll be looking to hit Retino in the corners. All right, let's take a look at the Bristol roster. Marcus Evans and Trey John Jacob, the new American backcourt duo for the Flyers this season, have been in blistering form. But Evans is out tonight, a hamstring injury. Drew, how big a loss is that going to be? Huge loss for the Flyers. They're just in survival mode right now. Their whole team is devastated with injuries, and I know about those hamstring injuries, so he got, he's got to take care of that. He's going to be icing that one. British uh, forwards Josh Rogers, Raph Thomas-Edwards, both in their third season in Bristol. Now major role players in this team. Malcolm Delpeche leads the team in scoring. Zach Simmons, he's making great contributions in scoring as well, and on the boards. Antoine Johnson recently brought into cover the injured Mike Miller, which, let's face it, tough sneakers to fill, but he hasn't made the trip tonight either for Bristol. So short stacked on Friday night basketball. Let's start with Raph Thomas Edwards, a homegrown talent. Wreck it, Raph. One of the, the best nicknames in the BBL. Had injury issues last season, Kieran, but he's really thriving this year. Yeah, he's definitely thriving. I, you know, I was, I was really impressed to see how he leads this team. You know, I think he's plus seven, plus minus. So when he's on the court, they make a, a, it makes a huge, huge difference. So it's great to see him improving offensively and being that leader for this team. Drew, what have you made of his form this season? When he plays well, Bristol at their best. Why his versatility shooting 40% from a three this year? There's Trey John Jacob become a crucial part of this team, averaging almost 10 rebounds a game and over 14 points a game, Kieran. That is impressive. You know, he's again another relentless player. The start of the season, they were getting up and up and down the floor. They were, you know, they, they were averaging the most shots in the, in the league at the start of the season, and it was because of someone like Trey John, uh, Trey John Jacob. 
Josh Rogers is emerging as a real leader of the team, isn't he, Kieran? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've loved him. Uh, I think he's another one of those glue guys. You know, he's not shooting the, the three-point shot as, as well as he can be, but again, he does all the little things that people are not willing to do, and that shows that he's a role model in this squad. Zach Simmons, one of the big 6'10", very physical player, isn't he? Yeah, really finesse around the rim, though. Has great touch. He comes from University in America as the all-time leading scorer around the basket. So looking to translate that this season for the Bristol Flyers. All right, so it's a, a tough, tough ask for Bristol being so short-stacked. Let's hear what their coach, Andreas Kapunas, thinks about tonight's game. Drew caught up with him and Atiba Lions a little bit earlier on. Coach, what's your reflections on the team's first half of the season? Uh, it's been a, it's been a probably up and down a bit. Um, you know, we have uh, had a good start with the cup, and then we've kind of had trouble finding our footing. We've had some change of personnel, some injuries. So, you know, it's a, it's a BBL season. It has been a, a good overall first part of the season for us. We had to deal with uh, injuries, uh, but there are no excuses there. Every team has to deal with those things. But we've been playing some uh, really good basketball both ends of the floor. What would you consider success for your squad for the remainder of the season? Uh, definitely to get to a you know, top four position um, and hopefully be in a position for the playoffs. I think just improving every game. I think that's kind of something that we said at the start of the year. Uh, we certainly want to finish with a winning record in the league and try to finish as high as we can up the league table. But most importantly, we want to be playing good basketball consistently. And they are a tough defensive team. What's urgent for you guys offensively tonight? Uh, ball movement is going to be key. You know, I think they do a great job of packing the paint and uh, making teams take contested shots. So we've got to make sure we move the ball and, and get them out the paint a little bit so we can get some better looks. We play, we've got to play with pace and we've got to be really aggressive. And two consecutive losses in league play. What are the keys to getting back on track? Uh, we've got to play a little bit more with confidence. You know, for some reason we're not putting the ball in the hoop. We had some great looks last game um, that we definitely should make. So we got to come out and just shoot the ball with confidence. And again, we've tweaked our offense a little bit, kind of made some simplistic kind of changes to it. So hopefully that gets us going a little bit. Uh, solid on defense, no gambling, rebounding the basketball. And offensively, we just got to be sharp, executing our stuff and, and just have an aggressive mentality about how we do things. Any key matchups to look out for tonight? Well, the, the, Pesh, the Pesh twins should be interesting, seeing how that goes. Um, but other than that, I think we've, we've played probably so mediocre we just got to worry about ourselves well i mean the the brothers match up i mean that's going to be a big one malcolm versus marcus uh, i think we just got to do, have to see how we're going to deal with their guards i think that's going to be a key element but i think the the two bigs going against each other i think it's going to be great interesting hearing coach lines talk about lack of confidence there kieran given how well they played at times this season i mean when we saw them against newcastle earlier on the season they certainly weren't lacking confidence how much is that going to be frustrating him right now very much so and that's what i was talking about earlier on with Smith with Andy. Anderson. You know, he was unleashed at the start of the season and I think he's just playing, the, playing his role at this moment in time and you know, he can do so much more. So that confidence is something they need to work on. A word that Coach Kapunas used a couple of times, well, variations of aggression, aggressive. Is that very much uh, his, his MO, the style of Flyers side that he's, he's trying to build and really champions that element of the game? Yeah, well, I think he's seen the landscape over the years. He's seen Newcastle, Leicester, what have they built their programs on? Defense, so he's trying to follow that with those teams. And you think defense is going to be the absolute key tonight, too? That is the key to the game, the defense. But I'm looking at points in the paint. I'm looking at rebounds, you know, points, second chance points, and points off turnovers. All the little nitty gritty things that need to be played on, that's what's going to win this game tonight. Well, in terms of points conceded, the number two versus the number D, uh, three defense in the BBL, Bristol's bench points. Incidentally, Drew, second lowest in the league, and particularly with the injuries they're carrying tonight, is depth going to be an issue? Well, this time of year is absolutely critical. Why? As you mentioned, you've got to be able to cover energy, uh, cover that bit, injury sorry, and bring energy when those guys aren't playing well. Bristol lead the league in steals. Sheffield give up the fewest per game, so that's going to be an interesting task. And in terms of individual team leaders, well, we've got to talk about Jordan Martino. We've already hyped up his shooting prowess, and the stats don't lie here. Second sharpest in the BBL from the three-point range. It is crucial, Kieran, that Bristol shut that down. Yeah, very much so. But the thing about Jordan, he moves so well off the ball. Now free up from a lot of backdoor cuts and a lot of easy baskets. He can play off the ball, and that's what makes him so dangerous. Who are you looking forward to seeing on court tonight, Jordan? 
mic to getting it done tonight in front of the Sky cameras, becoming an all-time leading scorer for the Sheffield Sharks. It's written in the stars. He's getting it done, right? He's getting it done. Mic'd up, baby. First quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Might get it done. And no like pressure. I say, he's mic'd up, so I'm looking forward to seeing that footage a bit later on. All right, then. We are almost ready for game time here in Sheffield. Tip-off is coming next. Let's go, fellas. Let's go. Sky Sports up in the tank, baby. Let's go. Let's go. The Del Pesh Derby coming up. Dumps it off and coming in by Delpesh. Oh, that is too nice. Welcome back to Friday Night Basketball here on Sky Sports. Sharks Flyers, our live game this evening. Getting close to tip off. So let's hand over to our commentary team, Drew Lasker, is hot footed it over to hang with Antro and Dan Rowley. Yes, he has indeed. Thank you very much. Now, we're hoping to see a little bit of history tonight with Mike Tuck becoming the all-time leading scorer. We'd like to see him do it on a trademark three at the top of the key, wouldn't we, rather than a free throw? We would indeed. He scored a couple of those points against me, so I'm rooting for him to get over that line tonight. Well, that is the aim, and I'm sure he'll be wanting to get it done as soon as possible. He does regularly score for the Sheffield Sharks, perhaps not in the volume he did in his early days, but four points is surely doable. Let's have a look at the starting five and, and uh, Anderson back into the starting five having come off the bench last week Wallace is still out there it's Rodney Glasgow who makes way I think that's huge Anderson was the leader at the start of the season he's their floor general to thrust him back in the starting five here coach is going to ask him now to step up and at the other end of the floor we talk about the absentees what that means is a first ever start for Samuels 
at the point guard position. A young man starting out in the game, a lot of pressure on him tonight, you feel. Huge loss there for the Bristol Flyers. However, this young British talent has an amazing opportunity here. We've seen him make big plays as well in that great uh, win they had against the Leicester Riders. So can he repeat those game-defining moments? Well, he's certainly a young man starting out his career. There's one guy who knows a thing or two about the point guard position. The reigning MVP, Gino Crandall, in the house, getting his scout on. Well, he's played you. both of these teams already in January. That's taking your homework to the next level. Here we go. It is the Del Pesches who don't really execute the jump ball very well <laughs> to start it off. They'll blame that on the ref, throw it too high. Here's Retino. Delpesh on Delpesh. And uh, knocked away and out of bounds, the Sharks ball from the end. I like that though, that's what we all want to see, this is a Delpest derby, right? So we want to see that matchup nice and early, and uh, a <laughs> present neutral. Shot clock down to five, as Wallace fires up the three, Jacobs with the rebound. And he throws the ball away, no score for either team on the first play. Yeah, and this is where Bristol is going to have to look to get their offense. Having a young point guard tonight, they're going to have to use their defense to generate offense, in particular the fast break as you see Jacobs turn the ball over there. Is Regina. Go! Foul ball. That was almost a huge block from Malcolm Delpesh. Oh, I think you caught it right, Dan. I think that was a huge block from Malcolm Del Pesh. Fantastic time in there and great block from Del Pesh. Can't help but feel hard done by the big guy protecting the rim inside. And Kieran talked about it at the top. Retino is probably the best without moving without the ball, cutting to the basket. Probably second to Jamel Anderson here in the British Basketball League. Love his game. Right, he gets the first point on the board. Two and two. Here is Samuels, guarded closely by Anderson. Looking for Jacob around the screen. Nice pass. Delpesh rolling to the basket. Can't quite finish. Nichols made it difficult for him. It's a good look, though. That's what you want. You want your big guy rolling straight to the basket there. Good catch. He just wasn't able to finish the play with a with the, with the layup there. And what you see defensively from Anderson to the young fella, hey, I'm going to pick you up 94 feet, see what you got early. Here's Nichols. Retina. Down to Marcus Delpech. Backing down to Little Hook, and he leaves that a little short. I hope could have did a little bit more there. Remember, um, Malcolm seems to pick up his first foul already, so Marcus has got to be aggressive there and attacking the rim. We are going to get that wrong. So it's not only me, then. Oh, no. <laughs> no room along the baseline for Thomas Edwards. He's fouled in the end. And he's someone who's been fantastic for this Flyers team over the last couple of games. He's a, an unorthodox type of player. You know, he's one of these guys, what position does he play? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a misfit in, in that right, but, you know, he's definitely not a misfit in terms of production. He's someone who plays hard and gets it done on both ends of the floor. Well, he's a matchup nightmare there at the four position. And why? Because he's improved his three-point shooting, shooting 43%. That's what surprised me with this growth. Um, really playing well this season. Two points apiece, both from the foul line, both off Delpesh fouls. A little full court pressure dropping back in. I thought for a second it was a zone. They're still trying to work it out. Here's Nichols. 
That's a tough shot at the top of the key and he knocks it down. It's a really difficult shot. But we've seen this, haven't we? Kippen Nichols sometimes overthinks things when he has that open shot. But you put him in a situation where he has to make a play and more often than not he gets it done. Rogers. Delpech. Backing down his brother to the spin, but the block is uh, there. Delpesh on Delpesh there. Bristol get it back. Here's Delpesh Nichols behind him this time, trying to use his strength and. Nichols was looking at the referee and uh, I'm not quite sure why. It's almost like he stopped. Well, left his hand in there and committed a foul. One guy who did not stop there was still fast. He saw that his brother Marcus wasn't guarding him and really got a green light in his head to make something happen. I think it's fair to say that these guys know each other very well because they started off the game playing very great defense on one another. Well, Kiffin Nichols, that was uh, his first foul, but he has sat down as a result of it with Glasgow into the game. That makes them a lot smaller. <laughs> Wallace with the rebound. Anderson, a little high for Delpesh to try and catch and Marcus unable to get his hands on that. That's just one of those instances where there's just a miscommunication there. I felt it would it was a good look there for from Anderson to throw that ball high because you know we know that it's a high flying Del Pesh they're ready to dunk the basketball but on that occasion two different minds on two different pages. Here's Samuel Around the screen, Delpech rolls to the basket, drops underneath and jams it in. <laughs> it's the first Delpech on the score sheet and nice little play that took his time, nice catch and gathered himself and dunk finish. But created there by the young fella Samuels, great start. Martino putting it on the floor, getting to the basket once again and laying in for two. Jordan Martino does love these cameras. I haven't seen him play a bad game in front of uh, Sky Sports and good aggressive move there to the rim and finish. Jacob. Delpesh fakes the screen. Jacob goes in. Delpesh underneath again. Has it ripped away? Martino back to Glasgow. He takes the three off the iron and Fly is able to come up with it. Well, this is a Sharks team that are really struggling to score the basketball. Said so at the top of the show, the reason why they're not been able to, to win to that same level as they were last year is because they're inability to score the ball in the last five games. They've only been able to score 63 points a game. Samuel's getting bumped by Anderson as he drove to the basket. He will go to the line and shoot two. It's a positive start from Samuels, though. He's done very little wrong, and as you can see there, no fear mentality, aggressive going to the rim, and gets the defender to commit the foul. And speaking of having the MVP in the house, I think that's why the young fella starting the game with some confidence, because his debut was against Gino Crandell, which he done a very great job in that trophy win. He did. His defense was excellent, and he made a big play as well. Big three in the corner with breakdown of the offense. And we just studied the ship where you know, the Riders were coming back in the game, and Samuels was a massive part of that. Made a couple of big shots actually down the stretch in that trophy win. Nichols is back into the game. He replaced Anderson during that stoppage. Simmons came in for the Flyers. Nice pass, and Delpesh jams it in. That's a dunk at either end for the Delpesh Twins. That's a great look there from Wallace because he's penetrating the heart of that defense and perfectly executed pass there, and Delpesh will live on those all, all night. I've been really impressed with this Bristol Flyers defense this season, doing a great job of clogging the paint and getting out of shooters. So for Sheffield Sharks to get a drop-off dunk, that's very encouraging for them tonight. 
Patrick notice into the game for the first time for the Flyers. He's only had 37, 38 minutes in the whole season so far. And there's a hammer down from Thomas Edwards. <laughs> wow. It's just like that. Thomas Edwards, he finds a way. He doesn't always look the prettiest or most polished, but his will and his ability to, to, to know where the basket is gets him a point, gets him points. Tina ran to Wallace for three. Rims out. Thrown away by Rogers. Rotino pushing. Here's Nichols. Nichols drives in to Rogers, and that's going to be a second foul on Kipper Nichols. And that's what I love about this Bristol Flyers team this season. Josh Rogers there throws the turnover, but sprints and gets back on defense to make a great play. But that's just a team, that's a prime example team, uh, example of a team that just is not confident on offense. You know, again, it's a, it's a three on two there, or, you know, and you've got to convert there and you know, it ends up, it results in a turnover. You can just see as well, every time that uh, the three-point shot's made as well, that there's, there's no flow, there's no confidence there. And sometimes all it takes is one quarter and things switch around. But right now, Sheffield Sharks are going through this offensive drought. Zola in for Nichols. Here's Thomas Edwards. Again, getting down the lane. Can't finish at the rim. Ball bobbling about loose. Glasgow comes up with it. Delpe sizing up his options. Cross court to Wallace. Room for Glasgow. Gets to the elbow. Rims out. Rodney Glasgow has been that one guy as well who's been that bright spark offensively. I think that if it wasn't for him, the Sharks uh, could be in a far lower league position. But even you can see him struggling so far this evening. Over two. Well, Mike Tuck checking into the game. He is four points away from overtaking this man, Todd Cawthorn, who for now is still the Sharks' all-time leading scorer, 4,252. Tuck just three points behind him. Tuck setting the screen for Wallace. Wallace, he lets fly and strings the three. Wow, that's a big shot. Difficult shot too because it's well contested. But Wallace, as we know, a career 40% shooter. And they're going to need him to thrust his experience but also his confidence on this in the Sharks offense. Here's Walker, overcooks the three. Ball straight into the hands of Wallace. Zola to Glasgow, late in the shot clock here, pass is knocked away, shot still have it, it's going to have to be a heave here from Glasgow, You're not too far away, great rebound from Retino, along the baseline, it's Wallace again from behind the arc, and he strings another, when it rains it pours, and Jordan Retino, phenomenal effort there to get that second chance opportunity, and Devante Wallace stepping into that one looks as pure as it comes. Well, he's obviously still finding his feet in a short shirt, but the history of uh, his career suggests he's a very good three-point shooter. He's uh, committed the foul there, and we've certainly seen two, as you say, very pure-looking three-point shots in the last minute. And I caught up with Rodney Glasgow before the game, asking him in particular about Wallace. He said, it's just going to take him a little time to find his feet, but I guarantee you will see it come to fruition. Notice gets his team into double figures. Well, I guarantee from Glasgow on that endorsement to Wallace. You know he's been making a lot of shots in practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Here is Glasgow directing traffic. 
Wallace again. Three three pointers in quick succession. Confidence is a beautiful thing, isn't it, Drew? <laughs> Boy, all you need to see is that thing go down one if you're a shooter. Now that basket looks like an ocean to Devontae Wallace. Good footwork from Simmons to uh, patient with it, find the score. Really good footwork from Simmons, and I think sometimes we overlook, underlook to do what he does for this team. Because he's an input player, you, you want it to be a, a big, strong, dominant big, but he's not, he's skillful, he's finessing. Ten and a half points a game, very efficient. Rettino now getting in on the three-point arc. Sheffield on fire. Well, sometimes it can be contagious, and it just takes one guy to set the tone and lead the way, and... Jordan's like, I want a piece of that and knocks another, knocks another three down for the Sharks team. And we talked about it at the top of the show. The Sheffield Sharks got to get their offense going. Haven't scored over 80 points in nine games only once. Looks on pace tonight. Well on pace. Here's Glasgow. Wallace again. Oh! What? A few minutes for the Sheffield Sharks. The threes flying in all over the place. Yes, they are, Dan, and there's one guy in this court I would not leave open, and that's number 30, Devante Wallace. Pops down his fifth triple this evening. Incredible shooting from Wallace, and it's forced uh, the Flyers into a timeout. Four of six, he missed the first two, but the next four were all clean as you like. It's something about these bright lights that brings the best out of these guys. And you see Devontae Wallace there already hit four threes and it's trickled down. Rotino has him one. And the floodgates look here open at Ponds Ford. It is fascinating. I was looking at the Sheffield stats, same as, as you were. And it really seems to me since that quarterfinal win where Rodney Glasgow hits the uh, shot on the buzzer against um, Manchester, their offense seemed to tail off. Suddenly they were averaging down in the 60s, having averaged 84 points per game in the first 10, but they look right back on it here tonight. Yeah, you, you've noticed over the last couple of games, Coach Atiba Lions has been shuffling that roster. A different starting lineup tonight as it was last week, and I think he might have found an answer. Well, has Coach Kapoulis got an answer for this hot start? by the Sheffield Sharks coming out of his timeout his team trail by 11 Jacob he gets in on the three point action huge response there and, and for me Trago Jacob is their best player I think he brings the, the, the most of his team on both ends of the floor An incredible rebound as we saw in nine a game but that's just a big play team in a vulnerable position come out of that timeout and hit a three well they got to Wallace quickly that time here's Glasgow he's going to take the threes caught and he will hit a chance for a four point play as Sheffield make yet another three offense is easy when you're hitting threes and Rodney Glasgow this time joins the party and does it with contact and and you've been a player before it's amazing what one player's success can do to the team it infuels that team injects them as rodney glasgow gets going going to the line for one well to be fair it wouldn't take out too long to go through his entire three-point repertoire <laughs> <laughs> We've got 20 seconds, I'm sure you can name, what was it, seven or eight you hit in your career, something like that. Quality over quality. I mean, Ant would say, let's look at the, the, the mid-range highlight. <laughs> foot elbow is uh, Simmons, and that's a nice finish in the paint. Last few seconds of the first quarter, can Sheffield get one more score? Glasgow. Finds some room, don't think he got that off in time, no he didn't, that is waved off, but that is a very very good quarter for the Sheffield Sharks questions around their offense in recent weeks none tonight they are six of ten from three-point range and they have a nine-point lead at the end of the first quarter we will be back with second quarter action after this break
Welcome back to Ponds Forge, where the Flyers will start us in the second quarter, trying to make some inroads into this nine-point deficit they face. Walker's going to take the three. That's a little bit short. Knocked away from Simmons. Delpesh kicks out to Anderson puts it on the floor Glasgow spinning into the paint tough shot but he knocks it down it's a really good shot there from Glasgow that's excellent defense I thought the rotations were there I thought there was a few mismatches there but the big guys moved their feet and just a good play from a confident Glasgow junior that's what he does a paint toucher great job of getting in the teeth of the defense with floaters and mid-range shots Shane Walker using his size and quick outlet here's Glasgow running down court you shouldn't get beat like that on a May basket no you shouldn't that's really uncharacteristic of this Flyers team as well a team really good at getting back on defense but Sharks again utilizing that their, their energy on offense right now there's Walker again trying to use his size hooks another one over uh, Latina, that one a little further out than the previous shot. And here's Delpech down court early. And that's an unsportsmanlike foul caught against Shane Walker. No play on the ball, feels the official. Well, again, it's Bristol a little bit late to turn their heads. Transition defense. And great job running the floor from Delpech. You can see it's just a big slap on the arm. He's nowhere near the ball. The interesting thing is, I'm not sure that Delpech would have. A pulled it in, and even if he had pulled it in, what was he going to do with it from there? It was an unnecessary one, really, from Walker. Exactly a bad foul there by Shane Walker. And these next five minutes are critical for the Bristol Flyers, and that's why having an experienced point guard comes into play down early on the road. Who's going to be the guy that settles the troops here? I suppose the scout report would say, don't let Delpesh dunk it. Do send him to the free throw line, because free throws are not the strongest part of his game if I can put it politely no I think that's a, a, a plausible uh, summary of that Dan but look, he's a still a professional basketball player and he's going to make free throws if you continue to foul him and put he's, him on the he's line he's 9 of 27 now in league play this season here's Retino for 3 off the back of the iron still a bad foul yeah 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 <laughs> I agree with you I agree with you Rutino again off the mark. And I think that deflected out of uh, Rizzolo last and will be a Flyers ball. Do you see the attitude though of the Sharks? Yeah. You know, they're missing shots, but they're flying at the boards. You've got your five foot ten being generous point guard crashing the board. <laughs> Robbie Glasgow, you know, your guard crashing the board. Just the energy there that the Sharks got at the moment on offense is it's, it's really positive. And Coach Lyons mentioned that he's tweaked their offense a little bit, and you can tell the, dif the difference as they're a lot more active on that side of the ball. Got the Flyers scrambling, trade open shots for teammates. Great block by Marcus Del Pesh gets the Sharks back on offense. Anderson rings out on the three. There haven't been too many of them today. Jacob pulls up with the transition three. And he's certainly feeling it early on here. He's so tough, and that's a really difficult shot to take because the defender doesn't know what you're doing. You're, you're, you're taking it in your stride as well. Contests it, but it's not enough. Jacob, Jacob hits his second three of the day. Well, it's enough to get... Atiba Lyons to call a timeout here. His side lead still by 11 with seven and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. There's uh, one other game going on tonight. It's up at the Virtue Motors Arena where at the end of the first quarter, the Newcastle Eagles lead the Manchester Giants by 29 points to 23. And Ramon Fletcher with 13 points and four assists early on. There's not much gone in the basket that hasn't had his hands all over it for the Newcastle Eagles in that first quarter. Well, that's music to my ears. Looking for my <laughs> Eagles to get back on track. 
slightly better than the opening quarter this time last week. I think it's fair to say. Giants, of course, got beat by uh, the Patriots last week. They've obviously got the cup final up on the uh, horizon in uh, nine days' time. But they can't afford to drop games in the league along the way. Yeah, exactly. If they're looking to have a top four, well, I, I think they should be pushing for second or third. They have to pick up those wins there in the league, but it looks like they got one eye on that cup final next Sunday. From a, from a psyche perspective, I wouldn't want to go into that final in front of over 10,000 people against the best team in the league. You know, I'd want to feel, I would want to do that going in off a win from a, from a confidence perspective. Here's Anderson. Glasgow goes the opposite way to the screen. Anderson in the corner. And that is the seventh three-pointer of the game for the Sharks. And it was only a matter of time before one fell for him. He had a, you know, that last one rolled in and out. It was a good-looking shot. This time, again, joins his teammates on the three-point score sheet. Nice tip in from Del Pesh for two. The Bristol can hang around here, Dan. They're going to give themselves a chance leading into this halftime break just because the defense is so good this year. Only second to the Leicester Riders in terms of points conceded. Very, very good defensive unit they have here. So if they can keep chipping away at scoring baskets and keep this team close. Wallace, Glasgow in the corner. Rims out. Retino with another offensive rebound. Anderson steps into the uh, elbow and knocks down the two. What's really hurt them is the offensive rebounds. The Sharks have been crashing. It's the third offensive rebound of the game, but they make them pay. And that was huge for Anderson's confidence last week, coming off the bench, only playing 14 minutes, scoring one point. As a former player, I know that hurts your pride, your confidence a little bit, so it'll be huge for him to see that ball go in the basket. Here comes Sheffield with Anderson around the screen from Delpech. Wallace again. And that one a little bit short. Jacob pushing. Kicks it out. Rogers into the mid range. Delpesh with the rebound. Well, we see Josh Rogers hit that shot consistently. He's just got to knock it down. I'm sure the next one will will fall for him, but he's someone they need to stay aggressive. They need to get some sort of offensive production out of him this evening. Delpesh puts one out. Nice shot. That's good patient offense there from the Sharks. And they go inside to Marcus. He knocks down that hook shot. Samuels going quick. And that's a great play by the young fella. Veering into the defense, getting his body, finishing with the weak hand. A great play for the promising young prospect. Here's Glasgow. Wallace slips. Gets the pass back to him. Anderson. He's got to go up here. Retino is wide open. And an easy rebound for Delpesh. Kind of fell asleep there, Bristol. And almost a spectacular finish from Jordan Retino. And also, even though Retino missed that shot right there on that foul from Del Pesh, you got to like the energy, the vigor from the Sheffield Sharks offense that's been struggling over the last couple of months. It looks like they have more pop. Guys are moving with a purpose. What a play that was. That was, <laughs> it, yeah, that was up there with the Matrix for me. That was incredible. <laughs> it was able to you know, keep his composure while falling down. It was, wow, very impressive from... Well, that was more impressive than his three-point shot. <laughs> well, let's be honest. If you were in that position there, what would happen to your hamstrings? Well, well my knees were torn. That, that, that was, that's, another, that's another surgery waiting to happen for me. But it's just it's a really odd play there for the Bristol Flyers because the defense was was good for the best part of 22 seconds there. And, and again, it was a near turnover and an offensive rebound, which, which breaks their back. Tina makes the second of the two free throws. Sheffield's advantage is 12. Del Pesh backing down and scoring over his brother. That's really nice. 
played a really aggressive and I don't think Marcus wanted to foul him there. Well, here we have the battle at the other end of the call. Martino again on the offensive glass doesn't come up with it, but he's sure made a nuisance of himself. Yeah, good work from Meltas there to knock that ball away. And again, Samuels going aggressive to the basket. That is an amazing finish by Samuels. Anderson kicks it out. Zolo is off the mark. It's a good push there from Anderson and Joe Musvola needs to just finish that play. It's an open three in the corner. We expect him to knock that down. The ball movement, although he's got himself into a double here. Gets out of it, and Walker provides the outlet for an easy score. I think Devontae Wallace should have stayed in the corner there with, with Anderson. That was a really good trap there. Yes. Lewis was in trouble, but he left the, the double there and trying to get back to his man all the while. You've got the 6 10 setter inside Shane Walker for the easy layup. Steve Lyons calls a timeout here. The lead for his side is down to only six and you said it earlier that the way they shot the ball Bristol just had to hang about for a bit sometimes when the game's going against you you just got to stay in the game and then wait for it to the tide to come back your way and this is a Bristol team as well you can just tell mentally they're locked into defense together you know whether the offensive end they're having their struggles or not you can just see defensively collectively they're in it together and that's always going to make them dangerous now on the other end of the floor as I said down yeah just chip away just keep this game close because there's a few instances there where another three-point shot goes in and they extend this lead to 12 13 and that's when you see the game getting out of reach and the Sharks left left let them off the hook really because they've had three or four wide open looks for Bertino and Wallace and just missed so very fortunate situation for the Bristol Flyers to be in and they've capitalized as they sit here with three minutes to go down six we'll tuck back out on court and Sheffield have an inline ball with Bristol showing a little one two two zone press here. Gina getting into the lane, misses Walker with the rebound. Nice spin along the baseline and finish from Thomas Edwards. He's so good at that, and he's not very tall. You know, when you look at him, he's six four, six five, but he's got really wide shoulders. That that that, that body too, which is which just bounce off him. Really good control and finish from him. A perfect BBO four that can stretch the floor out, and if you put a smaller guy on him down down low, he can take advantage and use his strength to power up. Shot clock getting low. That's going to be an offensive foul. Push off from Rodney Glasgow, his first foul of the game. Corey Samuels just doing everything right on both ends of the floor. What an injection of energy this young man's been in this game. Well, Samuels is uh, six points personal for him, but he's plus seven on the plus minus, so doesn't look like coincidence to me. Well, he's played 15 minutes in the game. He averages 15 minutes per game before tonight. Shows you how he's had to step up here. Belpesh has been along the baseline. Tuck knocks it loose. And that's what Tuck is so good at. His experience, his timing, his knowledge. No post defending. Great hands there, Mike Tuck. Gino drives in. It's deflected away. Samuels pushing. Delpesh gives it back to him. Thomas Edwards knocked out of bounds by Rettinio. And it will be a Flyers ball. Rettinio active hands. He's been that pest on both ends of the floor. Really <laughs> good intensity from him.
notice off the mark. He doesn't knock it down, but you want him to take that shot. Again, someone who's used to playing heavy minutes, confidence is everything to individuals like that. Wallace, short on the mid range. That will be a hell ball. <laughs> Samuels, team struggling to grab the defensive rebound, so the guard comes down and takes care of business, wrapping it up with the taller Rusvolo. But well, one thing he has going for him is grit and toughness and everything else will come with repetition. So you can't teach those intangibles that the young kid have. Getting off to a great start here tonight. Jacob checking back into the game. Kazgo needs to get it in there, he just beat the clock. Gino for three, knocks it down. He's that guy, should be high on the list from everyone's scout report. He's a 55% three-point shooter. He's one of these guys you cannot give him any space. Foul call, two free throws coming. Oh, again, good aggressiveness from Samuels, making something happen out of nothing. Anderson going to come in for Glasgow, just picked up his second. Mike Tuck, by the way, slightly lost in all his points, is uh, closing in on 2,500 rebounds in his career. He's got two tonight, so he's at 2,496 in the rebounds. As the uh, second free throw is good. Latino for another three. Off the mark. Tuck cried it out of it. Bristol come away with it. Thomas Edwards short on that one and couldn't quite beat the ball to the line there Samuels difficult shot there I think Devontae Wallace had his number there and Thomas Edwards was forced into trying to create something for himself but a difficult contested three-point shot there ticking down the clock there's about a three and a half second differential between shot and game Wallace is wrapped up that's a hell ball and the arrow will give it to Bristol again trusting your defense find a way to get a stop coach Mufoulis calls a timeout and he'll have a 8.8 .8 seconds to throw off a play here well this is the thing uh they come down and make a three-point play or hit a three. They're going to half time, down only three points, which didn't look very likely when all those threes were bombing in in the first quarter. Sometimes, Dan, you just got to hang in there when, when everything seems like there's chaos and things aren't going your way and the game's slipping away. You've just got to dig deep and hang in there. And I think Bristol Flyers are a team that's got that mental resolve this year and resistance and the ability to play collectively on the defensive end, which which is the reason why they're still in this ball game. Well, Sheffield trying to get back to winning ways here. Another team trying to get back to winning ways and looking very effective at it is Newcastle Eagles, who have 54 points on the board, and there are still two and a half minutes to go to halftime up in Newcastle. They lead Manchester 54 to 41. That's an incredible uh, scoreline in terms of volume of points. Newcastle of old, really. Yes, I mean, when you look at those two teams, did you expect anything else? Well, that is true. <laughs> I mean, Manchester, funnily enough, have sort of lowered the scoring in recent weeks compared to where they were before McKnight left. They've become 
better probably defensively, but maybe not as much in terms of big numbers. Here come Bristol. Jacob driving all the way into the lane, drops it back and dropped in by Simmons. And that will be a good way for the Flyers to finish the first half. Sheffield came out blistering from the three-point line. But it kind of dried up a little bit in the second quarter and Bristol just reeled them back in and Atiba Lions, his team lead of the half, but only by four. And what a perfectly executed play there from the Flyers. Trajan Jacob there attacking the rim and everyone was in the right position. Get the ball in the, in the hands of Simmons, who's really efficient down low. Nice soft touch finish for him. Well, the... Uh, shooting percentages you can see Sheffield 40 percent from the three-point line having taken 20 but a lot of that was in a very short spell and they haven't quite uh, continued that on through the game can they pick it back up in the second half will be a key both teams looking after the ball reasonably well you look at the stats as well Dan Sharks the bigger dominant 19 to 14 winning on the, the rebounds and the shooting 40 percent from the three-point line if i couldn't see the score i would i would predict that the sharks rock 15 points plus here well let's get uh, some reaction drew is caught time Devonte, you came in with a reputation as a shooter you got four threes tonight how have you been able to get going tonight i mean we had a lot of time in the uh, in, in the last week to get a lot of shots up and i'm ready for the last game Shot of open block and three, and I just got in and got a lot of shot attempts up, and got a lot of mix and everything. Like, and as a shooter, you just gotta keep shooting. I don't, I don't care if I miss 100 shots in the row, I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna shoot that 101 one. And you guys have struggled offensively as late. What's been the focus to get going on that side of the ball? And ball movement, ball movement. We saw in the first quarter we did a good job of ball movement. That second quarter we fell in love with the three, and we just we went reverted back to what we what we what we did in the last two games. And we we've been talking about moving the ball, playing with the team, and in that second quarter we just played like crap. And we got to play better. We should be up by 20 points right now. All right, thanks for your time, Devante. He had a big first half, as did the Sharks, in particular the first quarter, a 26-point opening. But Bristol have clawed their way back. It's a four-point ball game at the half.
Sheffield came out flying in this game, blazing into a nine-point lead in the first quarter. Absolutely on fire from the three-point range. But the Flyers, although bending early on, didn't break, clawed their way back into it. And we got a four-point ball game at the half. The match stats absolutely backed that up. Dipped on the 50% in the end there from three points, Sheffield, but still knocked down eight of them. Huge differential in assists as well. You'll see 13 for the Sharks, just five for the Flyers. But Kieran Achara, we asked about the Sharks offense, asked questions about it at the top of the show. Talked about the indifferent form it had been, and they answered those questions and then some early on, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. Like, especially against a team like Bristol, who you know we, we know are renowned for giving, taking away the three-point shot. Well, actually, tonight... Sheffield were showing exactly what they can do from three-point line. Just to put that into context, Bristol came into this top three defences defending from the three-point range. So what went so wrong for them earlier? I think what was it to do was just that uh, Sheffield shot with a way to penetrate, collapse the defence, left the shots wide open. Let's take a look at some of the Sharks' threes then, and they came in a real flurry as well. Talk us through some of the different looks they were getting here and, and why Bristol was struggling so much, Green. Well, that one, it was a bad rotation. I think it was a little bit sort of that, you know, and this is a big one for me. Offensive rebound. It allows the, the paint to collapse, the defence is collapsed, wide open for three. And as soon as you see it go through the net once, you know, it starts, it starts flowing. It starts and you were talking flowing. about second chance points at the top and how critical that would be. Devontae Wallace hasn't been here this long, but Drew, if he keeps on playing like this, he's going to be a fan favourite. Yeah, absolutely, because they lack offensive prowess, and he's brought that tonight by getting his feet set and hitting great shots. What have you made uh, of Bristol slowing the game down a bit and getting back into it? Well, that's what you got to do. When you don't have your full roster, they've done a great job of weathering, weathering the storm. And I've been impressed with, with them with their patience tonight and getting it going defensively by creating offense. Uh, speaking of patience, uh, Mike Tuckwatch, at the moment, no points yet, but he has got a couple of rebounds. So as Dan was saying in comms, Kieran, closing in on that 2,500 mark. Yeah, another uh, amazing feat, you know. But at, at the same time, I'm so disappointed. I expected 12 players ran for Tuck earlier on, get some touches. He's not had one shot yet. A lot of Todd Cortles in the house, incidentally, watching on uh, to see if the record will be broken tonight. A lot of BBL faces in the house tonight. So many, and I'm proud to see that you know, the Sheffield Tatters here representing the WBBL as well in the house, supporting the, the guys. So it's a, it's a great, great atmosphere. Other thing we're keeping an eye on, other than Mike Tuck watch, was of course the Del Pesh derby. Here's Malcolm up first for Bristol with the dunk. Marcus didn't want to feel left out, so sure enough. He stepped up with one of his own. And then coming up next, this is, I think, a clip that will be shared between the brothers, probably one direction more than the other, for, for months to come, Kieran. Yeah, definitely. And I'm saying right now, you know, Malcolm won the, won the battle there. But, you know, Marcus is looking to take this and win the war. <laughs> right. So Bristol's still very much in this game, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. they got to be happy with their situation. This could have easily been a 15, 20-point game. But the young fella, Samuels, did a great job of having composure and getting them back in the game. Now, Kieran, as we saw at the top of the show, you got your MBE this week. So I bet you are thinking that this seven days just couldn't get any better, right? Well, think again, because it's time for Plays of the Week. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just long enough to give his teammate Tony Williams enough space to sky high. All the way to the basket and he's met by Simmons. Warriors have numbers the other way in transition. Beautiful. Jacob downloads to Simmons, fakes it, puts it up, puts it in. Flyers turning defense into offense. <laughs> I know. Both ends of the floor. That was a huge block from Simmons. Uh, basket to basket. finish tips it in reverse layup is good oh man what a throwdown 
by hammering. Armstrong getting in. And nice finish too. Goodness me, that's tough, isn't it? Now, Kieran, think very carefully before you answer my next question. Gino Crandall, as we saw in Plays of the Week just then, in the house as well right now. So when I ask you who is the winner of Kieran Achara's disgusting Play of the Week, answer that one carefully. Of course it's the magician himself, Gino <laughs> Crandall. I was saying it last week it was him on the defensive end. No, it's his time to step up tonight. So Gino Crandall, that was disgusting. <laughs> Diplomatically handled and very wise to do so as well. Right then, what a game we've got here in Sheffield. The Sharks blazing in to a big lead. But this short stack flyer side is not going down without a fight. It's a four-point ball game and the second half is coming next. Sharks have a four-point lead at the half, but they will feel it should be a lot greater. Bristol scrapping their way back into it, slowing the game down. More of the same from the Flyers. You'd expect to start the second half, which is about to get underway. So let's get back to Ant, Drew and Dan. Thank you very much, Nat. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the first question there. Sheffield had a, had a great start to the game, but with only four points, it's almost like they've got to build that again here at the start of the second half. Well, we know basketball's all about momentum, and I, I would say that Bristol Flyers stole that momentum at the end of that second quarter. Really good defensive stop, followed off by a wellly executed offensive finished um, basket there from Simmons. So, be interesting to see who throws the first punch here in this third quarter. Yeah, first, first five minutes is critical. Sharks just got to get back to making shots. They're getting great looks. They got to shoot the ball with confidence. And Bristol has to tighten up their defensive rotations to take away those looks from the Sharks. Well, it is the Sharks who get the first possession of the third quarter. Tino. Over to Watts. Anderson. 
Nichols now. Top shot at the elbow. Well challenged, but he knocks it down. You say top shot, but I think Kipper Nichols likes that degree of difficulty because he's someone who knocked one down in the first half. He's been really quiet so far this game, so I'm sure the shots will want him to establish himself a little bit more here in the second half. Well, a couple of fouls limited his minutes in the first half, so he's trying to make up for lost time, I think. Jacob late in the shot clock, gets it away and off the mark. Chase up Jacob, difficult shot though, he has hit two threes already in this game, but Flyers are going to have to draw something up a little bit better here to, to get more uh, high efficient looks at the rim. Wallace, looking to get all the way to the basket, denied a route, back out to Nichols. He gets the three-point shot off, and it's round and about, but not in. <laughs> Flyers got away with one there. Samuels down the lane, and followed by Delpesh. Great job. Corey Sanders doesn't make the shot there, but he knows he's got offensive rebounders there crashing the boards, and Delpesh was able to clean that up with an easy dunk put back. And I've been impressed with him all night, getting inside the paint. The kid is fearless. A great future there for the Bristol Flyers. No way past Delpesh for Nichols. Here is Samuels trying to get it to Jacob. Wallace trying to keep it in bounds and just about finds a teammate. He's under a bit of pressure, but they get away. Nice pass, and Delpesh with the two-handed hammer. Wow, good finish there from the Marcus Delpesh. But what I liked about it, Malcolm knew his brother was coming. Thought about it, didn't go. Give him the dunk. We call that a business decision there. <laughs> Imagine being on a poster of your brother. Oh, that's something you could never live. That, that stays in the history books forever. Well, there's still another 17, 18 minutes to go in that regard. Here they are going toe to toe, and that one just gets a friendly bounce off the front eye. And in these first three minutes, Bristol's offense just, just looks a little bit clunky. They got to get back into their sets and sharpen up just a bit. Well, that pass not quite where Nichols was cutting to the basket yeah and I thought Nichols um, did the right thing that he was cutting towards the basket and Rotino's pass veered out a little bit there and again just a, a miscommunication between two players but you'd want the ball there in the path going towards the basket yeah he's kind of thrown it to the low block rather than towards the rim Jacob. Shot clock getting very low. Del Pesce has to heave one up. It does hit the ring, so the ball is live. And uh, well, it was a tough one to spot for the referee on the baseline. It's going to stay with the Flyers. And other than Del Pesce's put back two there off of Samuel's miss, it's all been tough, contested shots. They got to find a way to get some open, comfortable looks. Samuels, there's a comfortable look for Thomas Edwards, and he takes the three. Yes, it was, Danny. He looked very, very comfortable. But again, it's Samuels controlling the offense there. Nice penetration kick out to Thomas Edwards, who he knows is feeling good from outside the three-point line over a 40% shooter. And he's improved this shot tremendously. Really impressed with him. Rotino replies with three of his own. Well, that's a guy that can reply, as we know. I say it again, 55% for the three-point line. He's a guy you cannot leave open. Well, uh, Thomas Edwards firing up another one. Long rebound comes out to Jacob. Samuel in the corner. Another offensive rebound. Jacob with it, and he'll go to the line. That's just great work. Jacob, Jacob was at the heart of the offense and I think there was question marks around his, his fitness going into this game but he's got a, a team full of injured teammates and you sometimes you just have to find a way mentally to to get the job done and he's certainly doing that so far this evening well as a guard being a third leading rebounder in the British Basketball League is incredibly impressive he reminds me of my teammate last year Cortez Edwards who at the two guard position was amazing at offensive rebounds 
defensive rebounds and pushing it out on the break. For one second there, I thought he was going to say he reminds me of me, but Drew, <laughs> <laughs> Drew doesn't talk about himself too much, but for all you guys that can remember, he rebounded the ball extremely well in college, and it, and it eked, out into his, uh, eked over into his professional life as well. But I thought you were just about to talk about yourself in third person. Well, I knew that you would have my back. I was throwing you an alley -oop. Appreciate that, brother. <laughs> too modest, Alaska, too modest. <laughs> Glasgow. Nichols. Time running out on the offense. Needs to get a shot away here. Tough one. Misses everything, but Samuels with the ball, so Bristol can run. Into Delpe, spinning past Nichols and finishing off the glass. Oh, good patience there and that little bump there as you saw where he spam baseline what it does is the defenders out of position and Del Pesce is able to gather himself to power that through for the layup and the Sharks better be careful here team Bristol coming in depleted lacking confidence all of a sudden have that belief factor the last thing you want to give an underdog Wallace at the top of the key knocks it down I think he's the type of guy that can settle the team's nerves just through his experience but look how you know, smooth and composed he is with that pull-up jump shot. 14 points now for him. Here's Thomas Edwards for another three. And Rafael Thomas Edwards knocks down his second. He's up to 12. Oh, the way he just squares up to the basket. He, like a, a cannon set shot there, but he looks really comfortable just shooting that ball. Sino sneaking back door, tips it in at the second attempt. He must be an absolute nightmare to guard with Tino. He's always moving, he's always cutting. Nice play. Thomas Edwards driving in off the glass and off the mark. But Samuels with the offensive rebound. Here's Jacob attacking hard. He's blocked from behind, stays with the play. Ties it back up at 52. Sometimes you can will yourself a basket, and that's a guy finding a way to get it done. Great block there from Wallace, but stays with the play and finishes to the left. Showing great toughness and grit. Coming in here with an injury, a, a nerve injury, Andreas said earlier in the week. Out here toughing it out tonight, keeping his Bristol Flyers in this game. Nichols, shot off the back of the iron. Bristol looking for their first lead of the ball game. Thomas Edwards trying to find it. He's up and down. That's going to be a travel. He doesn't get it to go, but really like the way the game has swung here in the Flyers' fa favor. As you said, Drew, it's a team that's going to grow in confidence. They're depleted going in. There's no expectations. But what that does is it's a fearless mentality. And, okay, let's see what we can do on a Friday night up in Sheffield. Wallace travel. Just a little shuffle of the feet before he uh, put the ball down. I think he got caught in two minds. Anderson going to come back in for Wallace. Oh, Del Pesh turns it over. Martino runs it back. He's all on his own, but he still manages to score. That's really tough. Now, okay, Jordan Martino has the foot speed over Walker and Del Pesh, but what he doesn't have is the height, and he does a really good job of using his body here so that he's not blocked. Del Pesh trying to use his strength backs down spins and finishes over his brother that is a tough move spinning to his left finishing with the nest i'm pretty sure he's made that move a couple of times in the backyard against his brother oh 100 percent you know <laughs> that that's that's happened hundreds and hundreds of times when they're playing one-on-one -on -one as kids it's glasgow for three off the mark oh, a three-point shot seems to have dried up for the sharks here and Offense is a little bit harder when that shot's not going in. 
Delpesh driving down the lane and putting his team in front for the first time tonight. Out come Delpesh. This time facing up and getting it all the way to the rim. Nice finish. Oh, Glasgow has suddenly found himself wide open in the lane, misses, gets his own rebound. Oh, man. Um, Malcolm winning that battle again. Is a little bit low. Zelpesh trying to get it ends up on the floor and out of bounds. A little bit low and a little bit off the mark as well. Yeah, so those uh, big to big passes aren't always on the money. That's where, that's where I appreciate the guard. They, uh, <laughs> more often than not, when they pass the ball, they get it on the money. <laughs> Sheffield Sharks got to give back to playing with Vigo on the offensive side of the ball. This has been the issue with them on this side. They go through these long stretches where they just can't score. they got to find a way to put the ball back in the hoop and get back going in this game. 26 points in the first quarter, 28 since then. Nichols to the fall away. Rims out. Shots offense are in trouble there. 13 points here in the quarter. And as you gentlemen rightfully pointed out, going through these long periods of drought, droughts where you've got a team on the other end of the floor growing in confidence. Cross court to notice. Block! What a block that is from Nichols. Kicked out to him, running down court, and he's fouled underneath, and will go to the line for two. Wow, good double play there from Nichols. First the defensive block, and then... Here it is. Perfectly timed and good pass there from Anderson too. Nichols are going to the line, shooting two. And that's how you get your offense going. On the defensive side of the ball, Nichols there making a great block, getting out in transition. Plenty for him to think about with... A quarter and some change to go. As Nichols looks to tie things up. Second one isn't any good. Tuck trying to keep that alive. But he knocks it out of bounds. And playing Mike Tuck for many years, that's what he does to get his team going. A couple of push in the backs, a little few elbows. That's him sending the message to the guys saying, hey guys, let's get going. Let's get back in this game. Here's Jacob. Driving down the lane. Nice pass. And Simmons with the finish. It's going to have to be a heave here from... Uh, Anderson, it was not far away, but it was after the buzzer. Another good quarter for the Bristol Flyers. Having trailed by double figures in the first quarter, they will go into the fourth with a three-point lead. Coach Kapoulis and his team on top here at Ponds Forge. They lead 58 points to 55. We'll have the fourth quarter after this break.
We're back to Ponce Forge where the Sharks trail the Flyers by three starting here in the fourth quarter having led by as many as 13 earlier in the game. Oh, nice. Oh, missed though. Simmons on the follow can't convert. Oh, too easy misses there. Shots get away with one. Let's get away with two, excuse me. He's tough. Rolling to the basket. Passes a little low from Glasgow. Another pull up in transition from Jacob. That one doesn't go. Wallace with the rebound. Glasgow comfortable in the mid range. <laughs> he was really comfortable there. <laughs> You're looking for a layup on that fast break, but only Glasgow confident in that jump shot. Cuts the gap to one. Tuck with a good hand on it. Nichols tries baseline and finishes through the contact. Great move from Kipper Nichols. Excellent move. As you can see there, he faces up. His body is really low. Low center of gravity gives him that explosive first step. Blows right by Rogers and then has the strength to power that through. Great move. And that basket should be recorded, recorded for Mike Tuck as he got the deflection on the defensive side to get them going in transition. And it all started that rally late in the third when he, uh, uh, the offensive rebound attempt by Tuck sending a message to the team. We, we've checked with our independent adjudicator, Todd Cawthorn, who says no. <laughs> Put two points on the, on the, on the I'm top. just trying to help our guy out. Nichols converts the, Three-point play. Sheffield now up by two. Drew is scheming too. I've heard of a hockey assist before, but that's something else. <laughs> I don't know how tough it is to score when you get to the edge of your career. There's Walker. Samuels left all on his own and makes them pay. Corey Samuels. I think he might be my one of my new favorite players. What a huge shot that is. To snatch that lead back. Flyers up by one. Well, Tuck has a mismatch inside, but they can't get it to him. Good work from Jacob. Pass it to Wallace. To Wallace. Nichols. It's a tough shot. Oh, but he knocks it down. Kepra Nichols. What a impact player he's been in the second half when you look at the troubles that the Sharks have had in this game sorry, excuse me in the second half Nichols has been that one guy who's came out in the second half firing and you see plays like that by Kipper Nichols and, and wonder why he can't be a little bit more consistent if you revert back to the playoff last year against my Newcastle Eagles 9 for 9 20 points that's the version that the Sharks were expecting to see this season Good help to knock that out of bounds from Wallace. Bristol ball from the end. Jacob, shot clock down to five. Pass towards Thomas Edwards. Samuels again. Oh, that one's halfway down, but it's through Wallace's hands. It's going to be a white ball. Again, confident looking shot from Samuels. Doesn't get it to go, but good energy from Thomas Edwards to be a nuisance on the offensive boards. We'll get another shot here. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Thomas Edwards again it's late in the shot clock he slips over Nichols with the steal has Glasgow with him but he loses the ball Jacob out to Walker for three and he hits wow big play Shane Walker again a guy around the 40% shooter from the three point line we forget how dangerous shooter Shane is from out there well it could have been two points in the fast break it ends up being three the other way Nichols nice shot from Kepa Nichols oh. and that's his spot short corners, elbows, free throws 
He loves to get to those spots, hit the little dream fadeaway there in the corner. There. It's Walker again for three back-to-back threes for Shane Walker. It's heated up now, and it's certain individuals now trying to take matters into their own hands. Shane Walker, six quick points from him. Wallace. Glasgow comes and gets it from Nichols. Glasgow penetrates, looking for room, kicks it out. Nichols has to fire off the mark. And Walker comes up with the loose ball. Here's Walker again. Not this time. Thomas Edwards, though, running hard for the rebound. Using his strength, trying to find some block by Tuck. Huge block by Tuck. Wallace off the mark. Glasgow trying to keep it alive. It will be a Flyers ball. Good hustle from Glasgow in the play before. Nice pump fake here from Thomas Edwards, who's really good, crafty in there, and good competitive nature there from two Americans going at it. Timeout call. Five minutes and 38 seconds remaining in this ball game. It is a two-point Bristol lead. This one very much in the balance. Could go either way. In the balance up in Newcastle as the Eagles, who did drop behind in the third quarter, have regained the lead. 74-71. They have the advantage with 11 minutes and 40 to go. If we look at the quarter scoring, you can see 26 points in the first quarter, 29 points for the Sharks in the middle two. They've got back up to 10 here. They've got to keep that sort of pace going if they're going to win this game at the offensive end. Yeah, because those droughts can be absolutely debilitating to these teams' results. And you said Dan's got started off better in this quarter and you know, largely part to Kipper Nichols. So, you know, we commented on how contagious it can be when gun, one guy starts hitting and you know, someone else pops up and Kipper Nichols for them in the second half and it's been it's been that bright spot for them. He's got 13 points personal. The majority of these points have come from in the second half. Oh, Mike Tuck trying to lead his team to victory. He's still chasing Todd Cawthorn. He still needs three points to tie, four to go ahead of him as the Sharks' all-time scorer. He'd rather a win, I'm sure. Here's Jacob for three. Anderson rising up for it. Smallest guy on the court. Wise in the buff. Everyone there to smack that. Glasgow in towards Retino, but he loses the ball. The tough pass. There way too much traffic. I think to bounce past that one in there to the heart of the Flyers' defense. Jacob loses it. Anderson comes away with the ball. Anderson. Wallace with the fake. Drives in. Oh, what a block from Delpesh. Wow, that's a rim protector right there. Huge play. Rogers strings the three at the other end. Defense to offense for the Flyers. Goodness me, high above the rim though, Del Pesh meets him. I thought Del Pesh was unfortunate first player of the game, but Josh Rogers over into the floor, steps into that three. Samuels call for a holding foul. And you see why both of these teams are ranked in the top four defensively. Both sides of the ball making great efforts, effort plays. I call them I want. Defense is all about I want. And they're doing a great job of making the extra effort of coming to the weak side. Wallace is kind of stuck and time running out on the offense. Glasgow drives in. Wallace for three. Strings it! Wow. Again, not the most fluent of offenses from Sharks. You could really feel the borderline desperation there, but Wallace pump fake originally, but gets it to go. His fifth in nine attempts. 
for 17 points. There's Delpes trying to spin baseline. Tuck denies it. Reset. A good knock loose by Tuck. Time is about to expire. Delpes gets the shot away. And that will be a Sheffield ball. That's just fantastic. On ball, one on one post defense from Mike Tuck. You know, the experience, the strength, the knowledge as well not to reach. Great effort. Doing all the little things to lead his Sharks to a, hopefully a victory tonight. He might have got a fortunate bounce out. It could have come off Wallace's hand last. But Sheffield have it and a chance to tie the game. Here's Wallace looking to take the lead and overcooking the three. Three minutes to play, one basket between them. Samuels getting all the way to the rim, doesn't convert though. Whoa, that pass is a little high. Wallace is able to get it. Glasgow penetrates, floats it, and ties the game at 70 points apiece. That's great composure there. He wanted that original three-point shot, reevaluated his options there, and a good use of going left. And that quick, high, arcing hook shot, so it's unblockable. Really nice move there from Glasgow Jr. He's really effective at that little float shot, one hand, very good. From Even from further out than that, he's able to drop that one in as Bristol Flyers call a timeout. Two and a half minutes to go, and this one very much could still go either way. And it's about execution here now. We're into the stage where every possession matters for these two teams offensively and defensively well i think i've really enjoyed this game by the way i think it's been such a good game because it's been that mentality down every play matters okay it's not without errors yes there's, there's turnovers there of course but if you look at the intensity from both of these teams on both ends of the floor the intensity level has been quite high it feels like a playoff game to, to, to me the, the intensity level has been, been been that high and uh, well, here we are at 70, 70, you know, nothing to separate the two with two minutes 27 to go. Uh, I'm, I'm up for another quarter if you are, Dan. <laughs> well, we wouldn't mind another five minutes, which is still very much on the cards here with 2.27 to go. They are tied. Fans enjoying themselves. I'm sure they wouldn't be averse to a bit of free basketball. Samuels down to Delpech. Tuck again, great hands to knock that away. He's such a good defender. He's not a guy you want to isolate yourself with because he's, you know, again, it's his knowledge, it's his ability and his strength to outperform the, his opposition. Glasgow off the mark, just couldn't get the friendly bounce on that one. Inside the final two, still level. Samuels calls for the screen. Delpesh comes to set it. Back to Delpesh. Time running out again. He's trying to go to work past Tuck. Tuck does a great job. That hits the ring, so the ball is live. And through the hands once again of Wallace. Just superb defense again. I can't speak highly enough of the Tuck's defense. I know we're all here to see him score points, but boy, is that valuable when he's working like that on the other end of the floor. Wallace just wasn't able to bring that ball into his chest. Again, they're looking to force it into Del Pesh late in the shot clock, too. He hasn't got much time to work with. He does manage to get the shot away and put his team in front. Del Pesh is too good of a score. You've got to give him, you give him enough opportunity. That takes him to 18 points personal. 18 points, 8 rebounds. There was an inadvertent horn there as the, uh, I think the shot clock hadn't quite reset. And that's why the horn went off. So the referee stopped and 
will, will go again and Sheffield will get well they're going to have to take a couple of seconds off the shot clock because they had dribbled it forward I think it'll be 21 was my take here is that great hand from top to knock it away certainly work hard out there at the defensive end as you say he came for the points he hasn't had a shot yet but he's certainly contributed to the position his team's in can they get over the line at the minute is the Flyers with the lead 70 seconds to play it's tough put it on the floor driving in and he can't convert Rogers left open for three. Oh, what a shot from Josh Rogers with 52.7 seconds to go. That's huge, Dan, and Josh Rogers wanted it too. You can see before he's even caught the basketball, he's eyeing up the rim, waiting for it to pull the trigger, and goodness me. Big play. Well, a huge play. And you can see in the background the Tiva Lions calling the timeout. 52.7 seconds to go. He's got five points to try and make up. Presumably coming out of this timeout, they advance the ball because time is against them. They need to get something quick. Yeah, it's a quick score, and you know, 52 seconds is a long time, Dan. As you know, you've seen enough enough games over the years. So you know, you need it. You need a and execute here uh, offensive it doesn't have to be a three just score the basketball they'll come back down you've got enough time here to play defense and then again you've got a, a, a shot or an opportunity to, to retire or win the game well whatever happens they need a score here Sheffield what they can't avoid uh, what they can't afford to do is to come up with a blank and have I don't know maybe 40 something seconds left on the clock and still down five. Where they do advance the ball. And where the disadvantage is, is a team like this that are, uh, are, are struggling on the offensive end for confidence uh, psychologically. So it's really difficult to, to, to sometimes be able to perform at the end of game just because the pressure is, is at its height. Del Pesh back into the game. Glasgow comes to get it around the screen. Back to Wallace. Wallace. Here's Nichols for three. Off the mark. Delpish with the offensive rebound. Nichols. Driving in. Gets fouled and finger rolls it in. <laughs> Big play and a chance to make it three points. That sequence of events worked out well for the Sharks. It didn't get anything off the original look, which was, which was the Kipper and Nichols three, but persistence there great offensive rebound from Del Pesh and Nichols found a way all the way to the rim and it's an opportunity to shoot a three-point play 38.5 seconds to go he makes it a two-point game the perfect outcome for the Sharks they need a stop here Bristol will want to take some time but they've got to score at the end of it make it a two possession game again Samuels to Delpesh. Samuels breaks free to Rogers again. No, he misses it. Delpesh gets his hand on it. Sheffield have 16 seconds to potentially tie or win. Here's Glasgow to Retino. Inside to Delpesh. Samuels breaks it up. Samuels couldn't quite keep it in bounds. 3.2 seconds to go and Sheffield Sharks have a timeout here to draw up a play to tie or win the game wow what a play there from Samuels to get across and deny that post entry to Del Pesh the deflections all over the place but it will be Sharks we'll get another chance we'll have another opportunity with 3 seconds to go do you go, do you go for the tie or the win here I'm at home, I'm just looking for a score. I think when you're at home, you, overtime is fine. 
you know, statistically, I don't know, Dan, I, 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 I'm, prob- I'm pretty sure that the home team wins more than they lose in overtime. Well, they win more than they lose in general. I haven't got the stat off the top of my head to overtime, but it seems, seems a logical thing. I'll, I'll buy that. But the other thing you've got is the opportunity with 3.2 to actually catch the ball and attack the basket and put them under the pressure of committing a foul. Now, the interesting thing is neither team is over the limit here. So the Flyers do have a foul to give, but that's dangerous with 3.2 because you can just go quick up. Well, Tuck is back into the game for Delpesh, presumably because he's a better free throw shooter should it come to that. It's Glasgow to inbound from the end line. And Coach Kapulis turns to the table. He's seen what Sheffield have got, and he's going to call a timeout. I never quite know with this move. I've seen it a lot over the years. You've seen, all you've seen is where they're going to stand on the court. You don't know what they've what they've drawn up. Okay, maybe he's got the scout, so he knows it's a normal play that they run baseline out of bounds, or maybe not. And Atiba might change it. He might not change it. Oh, and it may be just be the psychology of, of, of what Co- Coach Pulis is doing. You know, when you're a player you're in this situation, you're so focused. And when you walk out on court, sometimes you're just in a zone, you're focused. And then the, if the opposing coach calls a timeout, you've got another 90 seconds to, to think about that. So maybe Coach Pulis is just sitting there thinking, look, fellas, we're going to do exactly the same thing as our originally intended. And he's got one more timeout anyway. So if, if they score, Flyers can still t- um, call the timeout and advance the ball. So it's not his last timeout. Well, they look to be set up in roughly the same spot. 3.2. It's enough time for a pass and a dribble. So Glasgow at the baseline. Oh no, a technical foul! Oh my goodness! A technical foul called against Corey Samuels. Well, he can't believe it. I'm not quite sure whether he maybe reached over and touched the ball out of bounds. Did he? Oh, he's come off the court. You can't come off the court. Well, it's only one free throw. They still need to score. But now it goes from to tie to win if this goes in from Glasgow. And it does. So Sheffield... Any score now wins the game, potentially. Wow, it's a good call from the referee. It's just unfortunate, you know, sometimes the adrenaline, the, again, inexperienced, you just get carried away in the moment. But if he gets a stop, if his team gets a stop here, then it's irrelevant. Yep. Glasgow again to inbound. It's to Wallace to win it for three. He's missed it. Retino misses. Tip misses. And Bristol hang on. Well, they had three goes out of the shots, but none of them would go in. Wow. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a picture of the shot struggles at the moment. The offensive end. You get three chances there to win the game and they weren't able to convert. You know, it bubbles around. The intent was there. The energy was there, but they just couldn't get the conversion to go. Well, the Sheffield shots will be frustrated uh, with that. They've lost 74 points to 75. And uh, Bristol, despite being so short-handed, have managed to pull one out, having trailed by as many as 13 in the first quarter. There's a lot of teams in the middle of the pack now of this league, and a game like this says to me this Bristol Flyers team is legitimate. It now moves them onto five wins, a little bit further up the table, but they've done it under some very, very difficult circumstances, and they found a way, and collectively, as a unit, defensively, they're able to find a way to get it done. But what a performance, what a win for the Flyers. It was a tremendous performance. They'll be delighted with that. Of course, they've got another game tomorrow, so they've got to think about rest and recovery uh, for that. But amazing the confidence boost going into that game if Sheffield not uh, tap one of those in on the buzzer it's a totally different attitude tomorrow
and good teams find heroes in the, the uniqueness of circumstances tonight. Bristol Flyers, they had their heroes in different forms. Corey Samuels, worth a mention, he was fantastic today. Ten points for him. You know, he was able to control the control the game, you know, rebounds, assists. But I think one of the most impressive things for, for Samuels was he was plus 14 today, Dan. They were a better basketball team with him on the floor. Then you had Josh Rogers hit some huge threes. Shane Walker come up, hit yep. some huge threes. They had individuals chip in in different moments of the game. And I haven't even mentioned the lead scorer. Malcolm Dow Pesh, 18 points, 8 rebounds. He was solid. He certainly was. And Sheffield's three pointers, 11 they finished with in the end. And you think how, how, uh, how hot they were in that first quarter. I think they had seven in that first quarter and it really sort of fell away from them. They didn't get as many good looks as they did in that first half and they couldn't keep that scoreboard ticking in a way that they did in uh, that first 10 minutes. And you look at it the other way and one of the key stats we talk about it all the time points in the paint how easy is it to score 40 points to 24 that's a massive win for the flyers and we talk about flyers being short-handed 20 points off the bench is a great going uh, for the bristol flyers a tremendous team performance from them let's get some reaction now we have uh, from the baseline drew Malcolm, you guys depleted with injuries. You come oh in here God. still on the road. Talk about that performance. Man, like as you said, uh, we're going through it. We're, we as a team, like we have a lot of injuries. We have uh, some COVID cases. And so for us to come out out here uh, with a short, of, short man as we are and compete and battle. And like we, I said it before in like uh, our interview with uh, Mike Tuck and them, like, like regardless of how the game goes, like we saw we were like down 13 or something like that in the first half. And like we never quit fighting. We like even though we were down, we never felt like we were out. And so I think we showed that today on the court. And you seem to be get the better half of, of the <laughs> Del Pesh rivalry. How yeah. was it competing against your brother? I mean, look, like when we competing against my brother, like you know, iron sharpens iron. Like Marcus brings the best out of me. And like of course, you know, I, I'm not gonna deny it. Like coming to this game, I wanted to, I wanted to beat him. I wanted to go at him. I know my brother felt the same way. And you know, I mean, the way the cookie crumbled today, like I got the upper hand. But my brother competed today. I'm just happy that I got the opportunity to share the course with him for the first time. So this was a great, great win tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Great win indeed for the Flyers. Excellent performance from Malcolm Del Pesh, as Drew was suggesting. He's definitely got the bragging rights for the time being in the Del Pesh household. Kieran, 18 points, 8 boards, led the way for them. Yeah, he just wanted it. I, I saw him, we saw him scream earlier in the VT. That's the way he played. He, he played with a lot of passion and made these big plays. Those second chance points were big for Bristol and he, and he led the way with that. Well, second chance points critical. Bench points as well, because we talked about how short stacked they were coming into the game. We talked about how that could be a critical factor and the rotation really stepped up tonight. Yeah, and you know, seizing that opportunity, I think you know, Bristol stuck together as a team. I, I said when they, when, they, when they focus on defense, so they had a great second and third quarter, holding the 15 and 14 points, but it allows the team to create game confidence through that. And whoever came into the game, they contributed tonight and found a way to win. It was played at a really intense pace, wasn't it? And the Sharks absolutely blazed into the a strong lead in the, in the first quarter, but then their offense really dropped off in the second and third quarter, and it, it was almost a role reversal. The Flyers' offense started to find much more rhythm. Yeah, and it was, I think it was like a false sense of security at the start. You know, they shot the ball extremely well in that first quarter, 28 points, thinking everything's going their way. But then Bristol just just slight, silently crept back into the game and really let loose the three-point line in the second half. Defensively, how did Bristol get back into the game? How did they manage to slow that breakneck pace that we saw early on from the Sharks? I love what Coach Capullo's did tonight. He changed the rhythm of the game. You know, they went to a little bit of a press, not not to steal the ball, but to bait them, to slow them down. You know, and actually putting that press on it then put them into late shot clock positions and they were taking really bad shots at the end of shot clocks and that allowed Bristol to kind of get the momentum going in the, the offensive end. All right well coach Kapoulis uh, he played a good game tonight and he's courtside now with Drew. Down three Americans huge win on the road against a quality opponent how were you able to pull this off? Uh, toughness defensive um, focus and we weathered the storm. You know, that first quarter, they shot the ball really well. We didn't do a very good job on the defensive end either. We turned it up on the defensive end. Uh, we were very focused from that point onwards. We defended well in through the three quarters, and we shot the ball well in the fourth quarter when we needed to.
and defense seems to be where you're making your staple this season. Take us through that last play. How are you guys were able to come out with the stop? Well, we, we talked, uh, we called the timeout and we saw the alignment, so we're expecting some form of screen to screen and situation. We said about switching. Obviously, we didn't expect to get the technical there, um, but you know, he missed the second one, and then again, we were talking about making sure we don't give them anything easy. We certainly didn't want to foul them and come up with a rebound. I mean, they got a couple of shots out of it, um, but thank God the ball didn't go in. Well, talking about that technical at 21 years old, Corey Samuels seemed to show a lot of composure throughout the game. Man, I mean, you know, a young player has come through our academy and junior program, stepping up on the B stage and, you know, 10 points, four assists, really controlling the tempo, defending really well and uh, helping our team execute on the offensive end. A lot of toughness, and, and he really helped us to turn the game around. Attacking the rim, uh, we were a little bit tentative to start with, a lot of turnovers. He, he was just aggressive, and he helped the whole team have that mentality after that. Huge win, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. It's a big win for Bristol. So I'll repeat the question asked to you both at the top. How far can this team go this season? You know, like I said, I think defensively they're, they're a top four team. They, they have the inconsistencies with their offence. But the way Coach Capullo is believing this team, that the toughness they showed tonight, that's exactly what I think they were aiming for, a top four finish. He was asking for that, wasn't he, in his pre-game interview, aggression. He certainly got that. And Corey Samuels, a player that quite rightly was uh, singled out then, 21-year-old, has come through the ranks. He was an absolute live wire here, wasn't he? Great to watch. You know, I, I was really worried at the end when they got that technical. Right. But watching them, he was relentless, attacking the basket. You know, he had a great change of speed, finishing around the rim. He, he missed a couple, uh, but at the same time, like I said, taking the big shots when, when needed, he led by example tonight. Speaking of leading by example, Josh Rogers is a player that you talked about at the top, talked about his increasing leadership. He had a clutch play at the death, didn't he? Yeah, he. I mean, big, big time shots at the end. And, you know, we know he was capable of shooting the the point shot hasn't been great this season I think down at 20 percent but when it when it mattered he was ready to step up to the challenge speaking of players that are clutch and bringing the offense on the Sheffield side Jordan Rotino once again had a big night in front of the cameras and I guess if it had gone Sheffield's way Rotino would have been uh, our choice for MVP uh, 18 points five boards four assists and three steals he seems to deliver across the board yeah, he just missed, missed a do-it-all. You know, he does a little bit of everything. And I was watching him earlier on, you know, we talk about his three-point shot, shot, but like I said, he's moving off the ball. He's, he's such a live-wire player, so hard to guard. You know, big offensive rebounds, looking here, looking for finding his teammate, making easy shots. You know, it's, it's un unfortunate they, they, you know, they didn't find a way to win tonight, but, you know, he showed know that he's truly one of the greats for Sheffield Char. Do you think because of that highlight reel stuff we see from the three-point range, it sometimes uh, takes the attention off everything else he does in his game? Yeah, definitely. You know, and I, I, like I said, that I, he's known for his three-point shot, but I think his movement is so crucial. Like he, he makes such efficient movement, and that makes it so efficient and it allows him to score easier baskets. But then his hard work he's done in the, the defensive end and offensive end for those big rebounds, you know, he's a great, great player. So close for him. So so close for the Sharks, bitterly disappointing, I'm sure, for their coach, Atiba Lyons. He's courtside now with Drew. Coach, a, gr coach, a great start, but ultimately a tough loss. Where did it go wrong tonight? Uh, second half, you know, we didn't make winning plays. They did. That hustled us for second chance points and uh, key rebounds to really kind of build a kind of a lead or momentum. And we, we gave it up every time. So, you know, if you don't make winning plays, you're not going to win. 44 days now without a win. Where does the frustration lie with you during the stretch? You just got to figure it out. You know, it's uh, not one particular thing. Um, we've improved from, from some of the other losses we've had. They've been probably tragic. This one, you saw some signs of improvement. Offensively, it's a little bit better. But, um, you know, we've got to be tough, and we just got to make winning plays. And what will be your message to the team in the locker room to get this thing turned around? You can't get outplayed in the second half. You can't get out hustled. you, you got to make those plays. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thanks. Is that how you view it, Kieran, that they were outplayed and out-hustled in the second half? You know, I'm, I'm always a player guy. I'm, I'm always protecting the players. You know, they, they were outplayed, they were out-hustled, but again, at the same time, I think when uh, Bristol started throwing that little bit of a press, a little bit of a zone, throwing dif different looks defensively, they didn't know how to respond to those things. And they were reliant so much on that three-point shot. Bristol then took that away. They, they did not know what to do next. Yeah, so. it started so well in that respect. Uh, Devontae Wallace, in particular, was right in the thick of it when they just couldn't seem to 
miss from three-point range at this stage. Yeah, he got hot quick, you know, and I, I, you know, it's great to see that, you know, they're talking about they, they need offence. He was finding his offence early on, getting those threes going. And both teams came into the game as two of the top defences full stop and certainly two of the top defences in terms of protecting, preventing the three-point shot. So what was Sheffield working up here? Lots of different looks to get the job done. Yeah, I thought they were, they were doing a really good job early on penetrating. So when they penetrated to the basket, you know, the, the defence was collapsing and then allowing those open looks for, for Sheffield Sharks. And they just got away with that. They, you know, they went to this, zone, uh, the, this uh, the horns offence, but they weren't penetrating into the, into the paint. Trying to get the ball down low, things just weren't working for them. It's credit to Coach Kapoulis for, for working that out, readjusting, and the defence starting to flow. Those big changes, that's, 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 that's crucial. You know, sometimes there's a lot of small, minute changes, but it makes such a difference for the team chemistry. Very quick word on Mike Tuck. Didn't get the points, inevitably, as we hyped it up to the degree that we did. But he did have a big game, particularly defensively, particularly in the second half. Were you surprised that for a big chunk at the end, he wasn't on the court? I was, I was surprised. I thought he was doing a great job in Del Pesce. You know, yeah. he was throwing different looks, getting little deflections, just making it really, really difficult for him to score. So I was surprised. But at the same time, I saw how tired he was at times too. You know, he gave his all at the defensive end today. And maybe that was just a, Maybe that's why he was out of the game. Fine margins as well. So close when that ball was rebounding at the end there. Tuck was right under it as well. I thought it was going to be the Hollywood ending that we were expecting. Play of the day. Well, this man seems to be landing absolutely everything. Uh, this wow. is... Your play that was a tough call, Kieran, wasn't it? It was a tough call, but that was a game-changing play. You know, big, big block, completely changed the rhythm. And then right here, Josh Rogers, big three. That's a five-point swing. That's the game. Brilliant stuff then at both ends of the court from Del Pesce and Rogers, as we said, clutch. Such a crucial momentum shifter that was. Although this one went down to the wire. So positives to wrap from the Sharks because Bristol have shown that aggression, that energy, that strength and depth. What could the Tiba Lions take from this? I think, again, it's the confidence thing. You know, we, we talk about consistency. They have the scorers. They have the players. They just have to find a way for it all to click in for 40 minutes. And Bristol looking at the way that they fought here when they were short stacked, they've got to be thinking, well, we've got a decent shot at shooting up the table and getting into the playoffs with a high seat. I think the interesting thing from a Bristol perspective is defence. I thought if Sheffield scored 80 points tonight, which they were very much capable of doing, especially in the first quarter they were showing that, they were going to win this game. You know, Bristol find a way to grind out games, and that's, that's their strength, their strength in numbers. So I, I think from a Bristol perspective, that mental toughness was shown tonight, and Coach Capullo will be extremely uh, happy. Yeah, I bet he will. The uh, basketball is coming thick and fast on Sky Sports, not on next Friday because it is Cup Final Day on Sunday, both the WBBL and the BBL Cup Final live from Birmingham. The Leicester Riders in action, of course, in the BBL Cup Final. And their floor general, Gino Crandall, in the house this evening. So Drew's caught up with him. General Gino, your guy Aaron Anderson came up short tonight, but how important are finishes like this for the growth of our league? Yeah, I think it's huge, um, especially, you know, this game having the Sky Sports camera on them tonight. I think it's going to be um, big for the league to, to constantly get those high-quality games. You know, you get a finish like this, and, and you know, everybody's eyes kind of lock in, um, you know, to the end of the game. And I think it's a good, uh, excuse me, <laughs> just a good showing for the league, you know. Cup final coming up next week. What's the mood in the Leicester Riders camp? I'm um, definitely excited. You know, we're not overlooking uh, Cheshire this weekend. Obviously, we've got them first on Sunday, and we got to take care of business in league play. Uh, but I think we're all excited for the chance to, to go out there and try and earn a, tro a trophy in the cup final, excuse me. And um, there's been a lot of excitement and energy inside of uh, training all week, or this week, uh, this past week, and next week coming up, I'm expecting a lot of the same. And being the MVP of our league, what's going to be your mindset going into this showpiece final? Yeah, um, you know, first and foremost, just winning the game. Um, but, I, but I think a little bit of, like you said, being the MVP, I think it's a good stage for me to showcase, you know, my abilities and what I think that I mean to the league. Um, and, you know, again, having the Sky Sports camera there and all that is going to be a big deal for us and for um, showcasing what the league is about. We look forward to seeing you on the big stage, fella. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, scoreline, he's going to be pretty happy to hear. It's gone into overtime between Newcastle and Manchester, 98 apiece into overtime. That's not exactly the preparation that the Giants will be wanting ahead of the cup final. Oh, definitely not, but I, I guess an opportunity to play in clutch, clutch moments, so maybe it's going to work out in their favour. What are your keys to that game? I know we're obviously going to get into it with our pre-game next week from Birmingham, but uh, looking ahead to it, obviously the Riders' heavy favourites, as we saw at the top of the show, unbeaten in the league. 
in brilliant form, but Bristol took them down in the trophy, so they are fallible. How can Manchester get to them? I think from a Manchester perspective, Bristol did a really good job defensively. They didn't allow them to just run their offence. They always had to create something else. Manchester have to throw their rhythm off in that, in that, that respect as well. And at the same time, I think Manchester are capable of scoring. They've got some great scorers on their team. That's not going to be the issue. I think it's going to be getting those stops from, from lesser riders. And Gino Crandall, brilliant last year, of course, league MVP. What we've seen of him this year, do you feel that he could be topping the heights of last season in terms of his play? Definitely. I mean, the way he's shooting the ball this season, that was his Achilles heel, I would say, last season. He is now showing that he can shoot the ball. He's, he's definitely been in the gym this summer, so kudos to, to Gino. He's definitely been in the gym, and I'm excited to see him in the big stage. We certainly are going to see him on the big stage next Sunday. Dan Clark, the team GB skipper, of course, playing for Manchester this season. They are going head-to-head. -head. Cup final weekend is next Sunday. For the triple, hits it and he's fouled! Vicker steps into the three. Crandall to the spin. Oh man! Armstrong looking to push. Armstrong with the alley -oop. Cup final Sunday, the 30th of January, live from Birmingham. London, Newcastle, the WBBL Cup final, then Leicester, Manchester, the BBL final straight after it. Back to back games, 11.30, we are on air for a 12 o'clock tip. So thoughts on the Leicester Manchester game, how tight do you think it's going to be? You know what? Um, it's, it's Manchester's first final. It's how they respond to that. You know, how, what's their preparation been this week? They haven't been there in a while. So I, I, I expect it to be a close game. But, you know, who knows? <laughs> it's one of those things. If, they, if they've if got the preparation is right, they'll be right in this game. Very quick line on the WBBL Cup final. How do you see that playing out? Really excited to see how Newcastle respond after all the changes that's just been made recently. Uh, but I expect London to, to handle business. All right, then. Cannot wait for it. And I hope you are going to be joining us as well. 11.30 next Sunday. The big man's going to be there. We are going to be there. And it should be another showcase of British basketball. See you Sunday, 11.30. Bye for now. Turn the music up and let it bang. When we hit the lane, you got to get up out the way. When we going in, we be going all day. And we ain't coming out until we get our victory. Wait a minute, yo.